This is the step-by-step -step progression of an idea brought on by the walk with my grandson. We should have been drawing this piece of china that he found, but he had other dark other ideas and from here you can see how we accidentally um, found the idea for this I thought we were going to draw it oh we're not going to draw it oh you're going to draw on your hands are you let's have a oh oh yes that's not quite <laughs> not quite what we were going to do is it oh well, that's very clever then does that tickle yeah <laughs> And we go, oh, it's a lot smaller than Nanny's hand, isn't it? Does that tickle your fingers? <laughs> don't move it! <laughs> don't move it! I can see I'm going to have to do this again. Look, you've got a finger missing! Did I put that back so I could take your finger? It's such a little finger, it's not going to take long. There, round right there. Don't move. Oh, you are a good boy. Oh, look, that looks like a sausage. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to do that again. G G Georgie says. <laughs> Georgie, I don't want his hand. I want your hand. Oh, so do it All right, then. do it here. All right, we're going to do it again. Here's the little hands all cut out. I've done a couple in tracing paper and... The original one in um, the paper that I drew around. Now from here, I'm going to choose some fabric to cut the hands out. Now, I've automatically gone towards the reds again, mostly as well, because these, I think you might remember these from the last project, um, are already backed. But And I've looked at those and I thought, oh, these are just gorgeous, and I'm just really itching to use them. But the last project was red, and there's been an awful lot of red last year. And as much as I love it, I must admit, it could be time to introduce a little bit of blue. Uh, so I'm going to maybe use some blue. And I have all sorts of pieces here, strips and long pieces, that I'm now going to cut the hands from. So I shall first of all back the fabric as I always do. If I can show you this, this is how my preferred method for you for backing small pieces of um, small pieces of patterns. Which this is small. So I back my fabric first, and then I place the piece on and cut, pin it, and cut it to get a perfect little hand or a perfect shape. Now a lot of people, students say, but don't you waste a lot by doing that? And it could be seen that way, but if you use your fabric carefully and place your pieces carefully, there's no reason why you should waste too much. Now, that bit there will come in useful for another um, a piece of a shape, piece of artwork, whatever, whatever. These won't even be thrown because these are, will be nice little rays, maybe for a sun, maybe for something else, but nice little rays. So don't throw any pieces. Just remember to place your shapes very, very carefully so you do use minimum um, fabric. And um, keep all the little pieces because they will come in useful. Okay, so no, I don't think I'm being wasteful. Um, you might not agree, but it suits me and um, I just think it's nice and you get a really nice edge. So my next thing, my next task now is to choose fabric for the hands and back the fabric I choose with iron on interfacing and then cut out some hands. Okay. Now I've cut out quite a lot of hands. I've done some pattern ones as you can see here and they're all lined as I said all backed with iron on interfacing. Let's look how cute these hands are. You will never ever believe the mischief 
that these little hands get into um, although those of you who have children around you of the age of two and I have to say maybe boy children uh, will understand exactly what's that saying puppy dogs tails and snails and yeah that's it that's the one that's what little boys are made of <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so there's a pattern once. Now, true to our design principles, we now need some plain ones. Otherwise, this is going to be awfully, awfully cluttered. Okay, all these hands are all going to go into each other. Yes, so, the so. next part is going to be to make up the background. Now, I've chosen the fabric already, and it's very pretty. It is blue, it is blue, and I'm going to do some patchwork. Yeah, I'm going to do some patchwork, patchwork background. So, hands away for the time being, not for long, I hope, because I'm really looking forward to arranging those. And now I'm going to make a start on the patchwork background. Now, I've cut six of these, and I think that um that might be enough they measure about 17 inches this way by just under four say three inches this way so that should give me a nice square of approximately 18 inches now i'm going to alternate them like this and machine sew them together let's have a look um this way so what have I got there I've got one two three four five I've got five there at the moment so I'm going to add another one at the end and very very quickly machine sew them together now you can actually do this by hand you don't have to use a sewing machine you can put them right sides together just like we will do now to use a sewing machine so right sides together like that it's up to you whether you pin or tack them I'm not going to do either. I'm just going to run the sewing machine along here, keeping a very, very short seam allowance, maybe a quarter of an inch. But if you don't want to do, use a sewing machine, you can do a very, very fine running stitch, very small running stitch or back stitch all the way along there. And say triple thread, three strands of thread. If you find that's too thick, then go for two. But make sure that your stitches are very small, otherwise when you turn them this way, you'll have tiny little gaps between your stitches. Okay, so I'm going to carry on with that and I'm going to get back to you. Oh, I had to think about that then. I'm going to get back to you as soon as I've done that. So it's not really good. They've been sewn together now, so I have two, four, six, seven. I needed seven strips to make sure that I've got a nice square. And I've machine sewn them and pressed the seams all going the same way. I didn't press them open, as you can see up there on the screen. I pushed them all going one way. Well, that one's not very good, but yeah, they're all going that way. Um, I thought because of the next stage, the next thing I'm going to do, it might be just a bit too fussy at the back. Not that the back will be shown, will be seen. And for that reason, because it won't be seen, I thought I could get away with pushing them to one side. Make life a bit easier. Now from this stage, I'm going to make some lines across here for cutting lines now i'm going to space them um i'm going to be guided by the width here which is mm, that's just two and a half Did two and a half yeah it's, it has lost some width two and a half two and a half i'm still going to make them i'm going to make them two and a half three and a half i'm going to make these now three and a half so I shall lose a half inch, half inch in the seam, sewing it up. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. I'm going, 
yeah I'm quite happy with that so I'm going to do it this side it doesn't matter which side I do it because um, the pen mark will be caught up in the seam allowance or the cutting line so I will measure let's measure from here oh I'm all fingers oh fingers and thumbs right so what did I say I'm going to yeah I'm going to do it there right the way across so mark it same length from the edge making sure if you have a nice straight edge you use that and not the end where the edge is all in bits and pieces okay where it isn't straight it's a bit wonky it doesn't really matter I mean you know this is artwork isn't it it's, it isn't for a fine sewing fine needle craft exhibition it is purely for fun and it is art art textiles now I'm hoping you can see this line here um, there we go now you can see the pen mark oh yeah that's come up that's it. yeah there it is you can see the pen mark here I'm going to do these all the way along and then I'm going to cut them out so I end up with one, two, three, four, five, probably six strips. Whoops, a daisy. Probably six strips. We'll see. So where's my big scissors? I should start here. Now don't worry too much about cutting across the, the sewing. Um, be a little bit more careful though if you've done yours by hand because that will is more likely to undo than the sewing machine so okay. these have been done now and i've got six rather nice strips and a little bit here now i don't know how i came to get this bit but i'm not going to worry about it just put it over there that's it doesn't exist now no problem so I'm going to match these um, I'm going to alternate the pattern like this yeah now I shall try and match the the seams as much as I can but I'm not too worried about that because this is the background for our piece of work and it isn't going to play a prominent role it is just the background another way of using up scraps make a nice background um, yeah so I shall sew those together the same way as I did before right sides to right side I shall run the sewing machine down the seams try and match them if they match if they don't match I don't care it doesn't matter because applique will go over the top of this and hide a lot oh keep doing that with the, the camera and we'll hide a lot of our little faults if you like this is the finished background now the eagle eyes of you will see that down here there's a strip of non patchwork although I'm going to call it a long patchwork there because um, this wasn't square enough I've added just one length of that fabric that fabric there and I haven't I haven't patchworked that I just put that in as a long length and I don't think it makes much difference really um, I'm quite pleased with it I've also backed it with one one layer of polyester wooding uh, sorry polyester uh, not wadding foam so it's only one single sheet there now the next thing I want to do is to start thinking about rearranging or arranging the hands um, oh gosh there's, there's numerous ways of doing this if I can just push that in I'm working in very cramped conditions today the camera is just here and um, I'm very very cramped for space but um, hey ho hey ho I'm trying to ignore it so the centers here now I have played around as I've said um, and I've 
placed some all sorts of ways let me find some I placed them like this I made chains from them this way like that um, random just randomly place them I've even thrown them down to see where they fall and that actually wasn't quite a bad idea and then I thought I could attach them with some sort of stitchery but then the obvious thing to do I think and you've probably all seen this in your child's first school and even in their nursery school the hands into flowers now which is like this um, I hope I'm not teaching you to suck eggs I probably am especially those of you who uh, are carers or who were carers for children not even children because I have seen some adults doing well yeah I had adults doing this because um, it seems very basic but then it's up to you and to us how we decorate it how we decorate it embellish it with stitchery and artwork and beads and everything that turns it into something else now at the moment on the camera I can't really distinguish between the hands so I think it's all especially that one that one's not come out well at all has it and I thought that would be a really nice one because the colours are deep. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. So I I quite anticipated this. So I thought I would make some leaves to go arrange them. Ah oh, yes, I had a feeling that this might happen when I placed them on, as I finished them I placed them on and I thought mm, I'm not sure not sure at all so I just cut some green and I'm not going to back this green, I haven't backed it because it was just an idea but I'm not going to back it because it will make it a bit too thick to sew um, like this right um, Mm, I think I'm going to have to spend some time arranging this. I'll tell you how I made these. I actually put the hands on a piece of paper like that. I um, don't think it matters which way I go. Right, let's go there. I put the hands on the paper like that and I wanted to cover all the fingers so I just looped from finger to finger like that and this one might be a better size than down there yeah I think that might be a better leaf than the one I've made and this one I deliberately made smaller for, so just a piece or part of it could stick out actually I think the white might look the white and the, I'm going to make that smaller. I'm going to turn away all you scissor purists. Turn away because I'm using my big cutting out scissors. As I said, it's all higgledy piggledy here today, and my table's upside down, and there's a lot of stuff going on as normal. And I'm in the bedroom doing this out of the way. So um, I can put up with that for a while. Hmm. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's a better fit, isn't it? Mm, so I'm going to have to make these leaves smaller. Um, yeah, that is really lovely. Yeah, I need something now to... Because I've got two patterns together. And we know that we like to have a little bit of a contrast... Go oh, hang on a minute. A little bit of a contrast going on. Right, now what would happen if I put see how it looks there hmm it needs something oh I don't know what's this right, right. 
I'm going to take this away and I'm going to make some sort of arrangement out of it and then I will pin it and tack it into place and then I'll bring it back um, oh gosh and I'll bring it back when there's something to see okay so I've placed the hands down the petals down and I think I like this arrangement and what I'm doing now is the very long tacking stitches just here there and everywhere all the way around just to hold them in place so it doesn't matter how long they are how scruffy they are as long as you manage to catch them catch all the little pieces there just to secure them and so they hold in in um, place while you're while we sew it and here it is with the, the tacking or the basting finished and as you can see if I make this a little bit bigger that some of the stitches like this one here is extremely large but that doesn't matter because this is holding that piece in um, to stop it flopping about and to hold it down there's another really long one there and um, that's all you need you don't have to go around every hand every petal every shape individually as long as you clip clip the edges here and there that you'll hold it down and stop it moving while you sew so what I'm going to do now is place some of this fine net over it. I love using this net. It adds a little bit of depth to it, but I use it mostly in big projects like this to stop the pieces moving around. Now, as you can see, this is very fine, so it isn't going to change the brightness of the colours too much, uh, whereas the dark one would. But I'm going to lie it down flat and because it's narrow I'm going to take it probably I'll need two of these maybe even three strips take it right to the end and then I'll tack this down in position as well all the way around the edges just to secure it while I sew now it's been laid down here and it's been tacked and as you can see you or maybe not I hope you can very fine uh, tacking stitches around there once again some big some small it doesn't matter because the tacking will be coming out later now the next thing to do is think about the stitch which I think I've already done that's blanket stitch and the colors now at the moment I'm favoring that green um, but there's so much choice now I did or I have I've chosen the green and this is the blanket stitch I'm going to do this all the way around well that was quite a mammoth task but it's been done all the hands have now been sewn on and hopefully they're beginning to look a little bit like petals uh, the green leaves are all in place everything's where it should be Unfortunately, I don't think the green leaves have made much impact. They're very pale. They actually look stronger on the screen than they do in front of me. Um, but they are very pale. So I don't know whether to actually applique something on them. Now, funnily enough, I was out with my, my grandson, the owner of these beautiful hands, and going down a, an alleyway, I found these. Now, it was... Uh, bin day and um, I picked them up and I thought I might be able to use these on something they're silk and plastic and I remembered them about an hour ago in my coat pocket so um, I don't know whether maybe they need something like just um, where's a good example perhaps a little bit of a tip of leaf there not too much just the tips there I mean I've only got these so um, I don't know how I'll do that I just have to cut them and that might give it just a little bit of a, a lift something it needs I'm not too happy um, I've put the dark brown uh, embroidery thread against it and I thought perhaps they they just need uh, veins but I'm not so sure about that either so that is something for me to take away and think of with these also there's some really lovely negative shapes 
um, emerging. And if you remember, the negative shapes are the shapes between the solid shape. So if you imagine, for those of you who don't know, if you look at a, a tree and it hasn't got its leaves, it's not wearing its leaves, and all you can see are branches, the tree, then the positive shape would be the tree, that's the concrete, the definite shape. And then negative shapes would be the shapes between, the whole shapes if you like, and that's a hole with a H, um, put your hand through there. So we've actually got some really nice negative shapes here um, coming through. And I have the feeling, now this, this little one here, um, because there's so much overlapping going on with the, the little fingers, I'm getting some beautiful shapes like there and here. I'm getting some nice shapes um, on my off screen. Oops, off screen. And here, and there's some lovely shapes taking taking place. Now, I don't know whether to concentrate on the negative shapes at this moment or do that after I thought about the the middle bit. Now, you might be wondering if you can see this, and I will make it bigger. You might be wondering why I finished the sewing here and here um, and here. I haven't taken them along. And that is because this bit here will be taken up with a middle shape. Now at the moment that middle shape is likely to be a circle or something like this. Uh, maybe something smaller. Oh no, that's too small. Um, it, it needs to be almost plain, I think. At the moment, I think. But you know how things are. It could end up looking totally different. So it needs to be, let's say semi-plain, to complement the patterns here. Couldn't I couldn't get away with any more patterns, I think, here. Maybe a splodge of colour, because that is very plain. Might need to put something in the middle of that. But So anyway, that is why these have finished. The sewing hasn't gone right the way down, because that will cover them up. Um, so to get back to the shapes, now you, you probably, <laughs> you will know. Some of you will know exactly where I'm going with this now. It needs something else. Now when I say that, there's only one thing more it could do with. And that is a little bit of blingy. Now I have this, and it is really, really lovely. Now these are all thoughts, and I'm really just talking aloud. So don't take this as definite, but I'm thinking allowed I could take some of these beautiful leaves off here oh let's get in the camera some beautiful sparkly leaves here and maybe dot them around and maybe here down here down here um yeah I like that idea actually or I could fill some of the negative shapes in with some of these shapes here so cut out some nice sparkly shapes and fill them in so some of the petals are blingy oops yes it, it just gets bigger and bigger you, you, um, you know what it's, it's like because you've all been there you suddenly think oh I'm making strides I can see where this is going and you hang it on the wall you go and take a coffee break come back to it and you think oh my goodness I don't know where I'm going with it now I also think just by looking at the screen I need to carry this really bold red out here somewhere to maybe ripple it out here even if it's just a slow stitch yeah I know I said that I would try and stay away from the red in this but I can't it's like it's like an addiction I see red and oh I've got to have red red and pink I like purple oh I like all these colours 
but red is something special. So anyway, enough nonsensical talk. I need to go away now and have a proper think about how I'm going to go forward with this. So, there have been quite a few changes since the last time you saw this, which actually was only yesterday. Um, I'm go just going to make this a bit smaller, see if I can get it all in. Right, at the moment I'm doing a chain stitch um, to just highlight the shapes on the fingers, but also as well to give a more naturalistic petal effect to some of these little hands, well to all of these little hands actually, I needed a dark colour. At first I thought I'd use red, as I said earlier, to, to sort of ripple out, but then I think the red would have been too much, but I still needed a strong colour, and I think the brown at the moment appears to be working well. Um, we have to remember this bit will be covered up. I might do that next actually. So because that is a bit off putting at the moment. Now the big thing I did was on the leaves around here. Now I've covered the green leaves with a little piece of net from this sample here and these are just the ideal sizes to play with. So each one has a different colour. Now they're very, very subtle, though they look bright together, when you take them away from the others and they're just by themselves, they're quite subtle colours. So each one of these leaves, leaves here have a different colour. You can look, see that one, that's a reddy one, and this is a blue. There's also a, a lovely lime green there. Now I've secured those under a piece of net. Now you all know that I love working with nets as well. Now this is a plastic net and it, it holds um, five portions of applewood cheese, so it says here. And lovely little bags, they were bought for Christmas and uh, gorgeous. But this is how they, they are. This is what they spring into, but just look how they stretch. So I took one of these bags and I cut a small piece to stretch over the net. So I placed the net down and then I placed a little piece of this over the net and secured it with just a little little running stitch in a gold thread. So there's just a little bit of gold twinkling through. Now I did that all the way round and then I trimmed it. I trimmed it here at the edge of the stitching and it was a lot easier to work that way than working with tinsy tiny bits. It's given a nice bit of shading in some of these different color shading so the next step is to carry on with this with the chain stitch all the way around till it joins up here then have another look and see if I need to do this the chain stitch maybe in these with a white I don't really want to lose the hand shape completely um, otherwise it defeats the object of, of using the little one's hand. So it would be nice to still trace the hand, see the hand, but at the same time also turn it into a flower. Now I've no idea what, what I'm going to do with this at the end, but then so often I don't, and it, as it nears completion then I get a little bit of inspiration. So I will carry on now with this chain stitch and um, once it's done I'll have another look and see whether the, these 
need a similar treatment but with a different colour. I'm thinking actually white to bring the white down here. I still feel that I need to bring the red out to the edges but um, step by step. Now I'll just give a brief demonstration of the chain stitch just for those who might be new to chain stitch. Now if you are new and we normally do the demonstrations in an exaggerated form. Normally I do it with wool and a big darning needle. Not too sure where those are at the moment. So I'm just going to use um, six strands. This is six strands as well. So I'm using six strands of thread as I have done here. Knot in the back, a nice secure knot. Then bring Oh, I'll tell you what I will do. I'll make it bigger first. There. Knot in the back. Then you bring your needle through from the back of the fabric. Like this. And there we are. Now I'm doing this on the side, so <laughs> might not be too neat. Now I'm going to do a very big one so you can see exactly what's happening. So the needle now goes back into that hole. Keep your thumb on the loop there you don't want to pull that through and there you go there's your first chain so the next chain will go into the same hole again thumb on the loop at the bottom keep your thumb on the thread and there you go and that's all there is to chain stitch and you just make that as long as you want. There we are. So I'm going to carry on now and hopefully the next time I bring this back I'll have made quite um, a big, ch another big change I should say on the background and um, I have to say this is really good fun to do. I I'm really enjoying it because I don't have to sit here all the time at the work desk. I can actually do this downstairs in front of the TV in the living room, listening to the radio or listening to the TV and it's really relaxing so if you want a little bit of New Year mindfulness I think this is ideal and I will probably stick to all top stitching yeah I might add a few beads Oh, but just for the time I'm, I'm going to carry on like this So there's been quite a lot of changes since the last time you saw this. I did get carried away a little bit, babysitting. <laughs> Before I knew it, I did all this without making, without documenting it. But anyway, I'm just going to quickly go through this because I don't want this to be too long. And it's heading that way now. Now, I have to try and remember what I've done um, since the last one. Now, I have put some lilac around here all the way around you can see the lilac here next to the brown to complement the, the dark and the light also put white I bordered it as well or edged it all the way around again with white not sure if I had already put in the running stitch can't remember if I did that but I've woven some more gold through the red and close up it's really sparkly and it's looking quite good I didn't start the leaves I haven't started those at all but I think I'm going to call this finished um, it's a temptation to just carry on and carry on adding more and more but I think I'm going to leave it because this is going to be quite decorative and I love these shapes here I just really love them. I've taken the centre bit off now because something else I did while I was babysitting. I've put made centre for here. Now, all I've done, I've drawn a star. I've drawn um, all the way around, just freehand star shape. And I've put blanket stitch all the way around the edge. And it's on beautiful yellow and golden fabric. 
interfaced with iron on um, interfacing. The stitches I've used on this are, let's have a look, blanket stitch as I mentioned, cross stitch, single chain, French knots, running stitch, and I've appliqued this really pretty flower. It's all sequins in the centre. Also, oh, whipped running stitch here. If you can see the, the purple here, and I will make that just a little bit bigger. Move that down slightly. There we go. So this is whipped running stitch here. So that is just a thread that is woven in and out, in and out of the running stitch. Now I've added two more applique stars. You can just see the white edge here. So I've had, I've got a large star here, I mean, as many points as you want. Then I have a smaller one, which I'm calling a medium one, in the centre. And you can see the white here, white one. And on top of that, I've got a pink one, which is smaller still. So I have a large, medium, and a small one. Now, I wanted the pink because I wanted to match the pink fabric. I wanted to make um, more of a, a comprehensive design, if you like, with the pink here. Oh, let me make this smaller because the pink's just out of shot. Right, there it is. You can see that pink there. I wanted to bring that pink into the centre because that is the only little bit of that fabric there. And before I put down some of the lines, it did look as if it was just all on its own and it wasn't fitting in, it didn't look very pleasing, but I think adding the pink there, it might bring it all together, so I'm quite pleased with that. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to cut this out, if I'm going to find my nice scissors, I'm going to very carefully cut this out, make it bigger again, so hide your eyes. Cut all round the edge without actually cutting the blanket stitch. Now you might be wondering if it's going to fray. Well, it shouldn't fray because it has been interfaced with a nice strong iron on interfacing, which should stop any fraying. Or it should, yeah, it. It should certainly help stop it. Now I'm just cutting these as points. <laughs> Some of them are very round. Doesn't make sense. So to me, more is definitely more. Right, so that is how that is going to look. You can see that there. Oh, no, I think that looks really nice actually. And I'm going to pop that there. And the colours do look really nice. So I'm going to pin that and then over sew that in place. Um, let's have a look. Right, so I want to do I want some of that green. I don't want to hide all this. I've made this bigger than I imagined. It was supposed to just go edge to edge around there and keep this all free but it's not quite worked out like that but really it really does if you set out with a plan so often it doesn't it doesn't work out right so I'm just going to put that there and then I will over sew that I might over sew it actually or if not I might just do it underneath I'll work that out. But that's what we've got so far. I'll make that smaller. There we go. Now, unfortunately, you can't quite see that there, can you? I wonder if it's shown on the screen. It's 7 o'clock here of an evening, and it's very dark outside. And everywhere is casting a shadow, as you can see. I have a light on the side of me. But um, it's not very good, actually. So it's taking shape now. I need to sew that on 
and then start thinking about what to do with these. Now, there's part of me that thinks, well, maybe I should leave them. Um, not get too fussy with them now. So I've got the contrast between thick and heavy here and plain and simple on the outside. So we've got the design principle going on there. These also, that's got to be sewed down. I can see that looks scruffy, that piece of gold there. So that one's been sewn down and that one needs to be sewn down and that one's semi sewn down. So I'm going to finish that there for a, a moment and hang that up as I always do just to see what needs to happen next. And here it is finished, completely finished. So what have I done since the last time you saw it? I've added the veins on the leaves here. I've also uh, put some more rows in here just to encase these beautiful shapes um, in dark lines. So if you can see the shapes here, all these shapes have now got a top and a bottom and they're encased in uh, within the dark brown lines and I just think it makes it stand out a little bit um, I, I just like just like it um, I'm not actually going to make this up because um, I'm going on a course soon and I think according to what I need to take I might actually make this into some sort of little work bag but I'm going to make this a bit bigger now so you can see some of the veins on the leaves now if I just pick this up, um, I'm going to move it to the camera, I hope it doesn't make you dizzy. Now you can see here, I've put lead, uh, veins on there and it's all chain stitch. Just chain stitch across following the line of the, the fingers or the petals of the hands here, following the outside line very gradually so we've got chain stitch in there in each leaf the veins have been picked up in um, oh dear in chain stitch and they're all different because the lines around the edge are different so this one here look you can see this one follows this line around there so I think uh, Matt's it that is finished I'm quite pleased well I am pleased with it yeah I, I am pleased with it it's a lot fussier than I thought it was going to be it's more colorful than I imagined and I've used a lot of red which I didn't intend to but I don't think there are any any surprises there really I love the centre. I think the centre's worked out really well. Let me hold that up. You can see the sequins there, which I don't know if I mentioned before. The sequin applique from a piece of net. Um, and that is finished. Now, all I have to do is find a little hand, and I have one here, and see if I've still kept some of the hands, which I intended to do right now which way is this right now there's a little if I go for a red ah there's a hand there a complete hand so there's the outside that would be there wouldn't it so let's see yes that it that works out lovely if you can see underneath there's the hand there's the thumb and the four fingers there we go there oh that's a nice one there as well so let's see if that works out well just those four there um now would that be ran that way yeah that one ran that way yes yeah, so i'm really pleased i've kept true to those tiny little hands um i'm gonna do one more there Let's have a look. I should do this until I realise some of them aren't matching up and then I'll be most disappointed there. So I'm not going to do that anymore. So the hand's still there. Now um, resembling poppies. Uh, sorry, not poppies, petals. Um, lots of stitch work going on and it's quite heavy. But 
when you do this don't forget that the fabric will shrink because the more stitches you put on there the tighter you're going to pull them not the tighter you're going to pull them but the tighter the fabric's going to get it's going to shrink now unfortunately if you can see here I forgot about that and I have gone right close to the edge here so this bit will get caught up in any seam allowance that I do can you see that on the screen I forgot about the shrinkage and on that side um, they are dangerously close to the edge not so bad this side that's okay and that's okay but I have two here as well so do bear that in mind do give yourself a nice allowance if you're going to do this well whenever you do anything like this make sure you give yourself a nice nice allowance around the edge so with that I'm going to finish off here get this out as quickly as possible and start thinking about our next project so anybody with any ideas um, Cass I know that you had a good suggestion um, on Facebook I haven't been on Facebook for a couple of weeks I need to address that this afternoon so um, anyway anyone else with ideas because I do did like Kath's idea and I think that's a great idea get back to me on Facebook or in the comments below okay so keep safe wherever you are take care um, and just watch your step all right and I'll speak to you soon